Hi, this is John Linneval of John Linneval Tutoring, and this is College Admissions, How to Write the UC Application Essays. Here's my contact information, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe and click the little notification bell in the top right corner so you'll be notified when I come out with new videos. These will always be free for everyone to use, so that's a great way to help me help you with free videos. The, okay, so the UC prompts, the essay prompts generally don't change, and they aren't much different from the common app prompts. So if you've watched my common app video, this is going to be very similar. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. So anyway, why are the UC prompts generally the same, and they don't change much, and they're not much different from the common app prompts? Because the UC schools are just like any other universities, they're always going to be asking questions designed to seek the same things. They want to find out about your persistence in the face of adversity. Do you give up in the face of a problem or do you keep trying or do you try to find a different way to solve the problem? Your leadership ability, your involvement in your community, and your academic and non-academic interests and passions. Why do they want to know that? It's easy. As a university student, you're both the customer and the product as well as a means of production. So you've already heard this if you've watched the Common App video. But anyway, how can I be a customer, product, and a means of production? Are you crazy, John? Well, maybe I'm a little crazy, but I have a solid point here. Obviously, you're spending your and or your parents' money, and you're probably borrowing money to pay for a college education. So you're a customer. You're also the product in a few senses. First, you'll be contacted many times after your graduation by the Alumni Association of any UC that you attend, reminding you of what a great education you received and how you should really pay it forward with a donation, since even if you paid the full tuition, the university spent a lot more of its resources on you than just what you paid in tuition, and da 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 da. Second, if you end up being rich and famous, or at least famous, your college, your UC school, will use you to publicize itself. That's right, California studied drama here before being on Saturday Night Live. And third, corporations can and do donate to colleges they see as, in quotes, feeder schools that give them engineers and accountants and anybody else they might need to run their business. All right, but how am I a means of production? Well, a college can be defined as a place where people of roughly equal status, or colleagues, meet to discuss ideas. You'll be, artis <laughs> you'll, be arti you'll be expected to participate in class discussions, and you'll most likely participate in debates and discussions outside of class. If you're a teaching assistant, a TA, that is, or a tutor, you'll be actually employed by the college to instruct other students. Either way, you will be contributing to the college educations of your classmates, and hopefully they'll be contributing to your college education. Students who participate actively in the exchange of ideas do improve college Colleges, so it's no wonder colleges seek such students out, especially UC colleges. California needs passionate problem solvers. UC schools, just like any other universities, need leaders and problem solvers for student activities, athletic teams, debate teams, political organizations, student government, and the like. This means colleges need to seek students who are passionate about various activities, can resolve disputes with other students, and can overcome financial and scheduling difficulties and the like. So what does this have to do with the essay questions? Well, really everything. They want to know what leadership and problem solving skills you've developed since you're going to encounter problems at school. You'll run into people who are just as intelligent as you, who don't agree with you at all on different things, and you're always going to have to balance your schoolwork with everything else in your life, including work-study jobs, etc. UCs also seek diversity. The UCs firmly believe their strength in diversity. California is an extremely diverse state, uh, ethnically and in practically every other way. So, you know, it really does make sense because it's hard to have a robust exchange of ideas between people who have virtually identical backgrounds. Oh, you're from Walnut Creek? Wow, I'm from Walnut Creek. Gee, you know, or anywhere else. You're from Oakland? I'm from Oakland. Wow, you're going to need to have people who have different backgrounds and different point of views speaking to each other so we can reach some sort of agreement on very important issues. For that reason, colleges often seek people from different cities, states, and countries, people with diverse socioeconomic backgrounds, rich, poor, different political and religious beliefs, 
the anarchist might meet with the conservative, uh, the atheist can meet with the orthodox Christian, um, things like that. So people with unusual educational experiences, maybe somebody was in a monastery for a while or something like that, uh, people with other unusual backgrounds. Could be literally anything, maybe somebody grew up on a goat farm. So. Thus, it's strongly to your advantage to detail what non-mainstream background and experiences you have had or you have right now, things like that, because people who are diverse are going to be very, very attractive to the University of California schools. So you want to check with the UC of your choice regarding essay prompts and deadlines, whether it's UCLA, home of the Bruins, or Berkeley, home of the Golden Bears. The UC website, as well as the individual UC sites, will allow you to find the school-specific requirements for each college. And I guess it should be UCS apostrophe, not UC apostrophe S there. Oh, well, made a mistake. Anyway, um, for each college that takes a common application, which and how many prompts you must answer, as well as any additional essays you must or may write. So whether it's permissive, you may write it, or if you have to write it, it's mandatory. Just please make sure you know how many prompts you have to add, you have to answer. Please see if there's anything else you have to do specifically for Berkeley or UCLA or whatever you see you'd like to attend. And please check online and check with the colleges to be sure you haven't made a mistake. You are also responsible for your own application deadlines. I believe it's November 30th, but can't be responsible. The 30th is a Saturday, so you might have to get it in earlier, etc. Don't wait till the last minute. It's generally a really bad idea. Anyway, do check that on your own. Luckily, you can answer only four essay prompts generally according to the instructions that are with the UC prompts. So absent any uh, instructions to the contrary from your specific UC schools that you want to apply to. Um, you know, since there's significant overlap between the prompts, it's for the best that you can answer only four, since you don't have to waste time deciding which answers are best for which prompt, um, or you only have to to a certain extent, because you can just pick one prompt for which you have a good answer, hopefully you'll quickly understand which answer is going to be better matched to which prompt, and leave the other prompt that might also fit, uh, but wouldn't fit as well alone. So that way you can just very quickly go through that. Don't lie or copy someone else's essay. Again, you've already seen this if you watched my Common App video, but I shouldn't have to tell you this if you really want to attend college. Every single college has an honor code. The honor code is almost always going to be identical. It's certainly going to be exactly identical to every other college's honor code in terms of it will forbid dishonesty. Academic dishonesty, such as submitting somebody else's work and claiming it to be your own, or not properly citing sources, um, or lying about something on your application, that can get you kicked out after you've already been admitted with the false information. In an extreme case, a college might even try to revoke your degree if they find out after you've graduated. It's not likely, but it could possibly happen. And just assume that the worst thing is going to happen to you. Assume you're going to get caught and come on, you know what's wrong to cheat. So all essays and applications do end up in electronic format. Most of you are going to be submitting your applications electronically. And those who don't, well, then you know those paper applications will be scanned and uploaded to some server where they will exist forever. Again, Murphy's Law rules the internet. Any piece of information that you wish would go away is going to be backed up multiple times and all over the place on servers that you don't control. Anything that's really important to you will only be on your computer and your computer will crash and then you won't have it anymore. So with that in mind, always back up your important personal data and don't put anything on the internet that you wouldn't want your grandma to read about you, okay? Make sense? All right. So once you've directly uploaded the application or it's been scanned, it will be subject to being checked by sites such as turnitin.com or whatever site it was. It was a different one that scanned my website 
probably because I have sample ACT and SAT essay answers there. So it's not if you get caught, it's when you get caught these days because it's just so easy. They have so many computer resources available. And if you lie about something you did, an achievement, a club you were in, and a paper you wrote, research you did, rest assured the college will find out. Again, it's Murphy's Law. If you're scrupulously honest, they won't bother to check anything. If you tell a lie, no matter how minor, I guarantee you that will be the first thing that they find out when they start calling up your teachers or professors or bosses or whatever just to verify your story. So just assume if you lie, you're going to get caught. Don't do it. An important note, do mention your achievements in your essays. This is also in the Common App video. Basically, two students this past week asked me the same question. It was basically, do I really need to list my achievements, where I live, my activities, and my essays? You know, they made me list those on the application, and they made me enclose a resume. Yeah, but the one student I was talking to was somebody who had gotten to the point that she was directing plays. And so I said, no, you definitely want to include that to say, I went from basically knowing nothing about theater when I first started in you know, middle school to the point that I've directed plays such as name of play here, name of other play here, da 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 da. You, know, you don't have to list everything, but to the extent it's relevant to the essay, you should list a few examples, just like you would in any other good expository essay that you write for school. Um, so the reader has an idea of the scope of your experiences and achievements. Um, why? Because you don't know if the person reading your essay is the same person reading the rest of your application. And even if that person is supposed to read your whole application, you have no guarantee that that person is going to remember the information from your application when reading your essays. These people read many essays. It's going to be hard for them to keep that information accessible while they're reading your essays. So if they see some vague statement, oh, I really advanced in the theater, they might say, what, you went from being assistant floor mopper to you know senior floor mopper? No, you want to say, oh, no, I went from being you know a bit player and, yes, a chair stacker and floor mopper to being the main student director, blah, 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 who directed these important plays. Um, I became the tech person who ran the lights, etc. blah, blah. Um, so you want to make these people's jobs easier. It will pay off. This works in most areas of life. Basically, you must have heard someone say, help us help you. Help the essay reader help you by making everything easy for them to access so they know who you are. Another thing you might think of is when you were taught to write a business letter, probably sixth, seventh grade, you were taught to write your address in the letter. And if you were like me, you'd say, well, why don't they have the envelope? And the teacher, as if on cue, said, because the essay, not the essay, sorry, the envelope will be separated from the main letter it happens all the time. If you're writing to some huge business in New York City, they probably get sacks and sacks and sacks of mail every day. If you're writing to Goldman Sachs, ha ha ha, um, or you know NBC or something like that, there's no guarantee your letter will stay with the envelope. The guy who works in the mail room isn't going to say, oh my gosh, I must staple this together to make sure they stay together. No, it just means your letter will be separated and if there's no return address on it and your name is Bob Johnson and you live in Detroit, they'll say, okay, this was written by one of the 500 Bob Johnsons who live in or near Detroit, Michigan, and we have no address, so we have no idea who wrote it. So, meh, too bad. I would have been happy to respond to this person's concerns or questions, but I don't know who it is, so I'm just going to put it in the round file. All right, so let's get to the essay prompts. Describe an example of your leadership experience which you have, in which you have positively influenced others, helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. So I found this little thing, great leaders start off as great followers. Hey, that's contributing to group efforts. If you're a good follower and you contribute to the group, you'll be a good leader because you'll know what has to happen when you're leading. It could be leadership in an official, in official capacity, if you're the team captain, you're a scout leader, a teaching assistant, manager at a job, or unofficial, if you just started a practice that caught on, recycling, sending newsletters by email rather than distributing paper flyers, thanking teachers at the end of each lesson, some other thing that's been widely adopted at your school, 
say it, say, you know, I never had any official capacity, but it turned out a lot of ideas I had were immediately adopted by other students. Leading by example works very well, even if you have no official title or power. Did you help someone who is struggling to improve his or her performance? How? Did you help your class or organization run a project? Dispute resolution. Did you help end an argument two friends were having? All of those things would be wonderful answers to this. So sometimes it's even just looking up the facts so that factual dispute can be settled. Any of those would be great answers. Let's move on to the second question, the second essay prompt. Every person has a creative side and it can be expressed in many ways, problem solving, original and innovative thinking and artistically to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side. Do you create any kind of art, visual art, music, dance? If you have pictures or video, it'd be a good idea to provide URLs to YouTube or other websites, or maybe even a QR code if you can get that in there to websites where they can be viewed or upload them to the college's application site, assuming they have an upload site for that purpose. It doesn't hurt to ask. It's worth making a phone call or sending an email. And have you ever thought of a fresh approach to solving a math or science program? Or not program, problem, sorry. But hey, it could be a computer program. Did your teacher ever tell you your approach was different, but it works? Mine did. Oops, did you teacher? Sorry, did your teacher? Anyway. Have you ever questioned a paradigm, way of organizing things, system of operations, or the typical way of thinking about an issue or problem? You know, for example, maybe it became clear to me the problem with the issue of government spending on new nuclear weapons was not what kind of developed, but the wildly incorrect assumption that any country, let alone the U.S., should spend any money on new nuclear weapons when there are already enough to destroy all humans on the planet thousands of times over. Or something like... <laughs> or it could be something like... I thought that perhaps species that cooperate are more likely to thrive than ones that compete with each other or compete intraspecially, you know, with others of the same species. I believe that was Piotr Kropotkin who came up with that idea. Anyway, let's look at the third question. What would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? So in other words, what makes you so special anyway? Have you always had a talent that made you stick out from the crowd? Did you work to develop such a talent? Art, science, dance, sports, math, spelling, math, again, magic tricks, auto repair, crafts, critical thinking. Did your background or experiences cause you to develop a talent to compensate for problems? So you can see also question two. Sometimes the kid who moves around a lot might become a natural show person, you know, showman to uh, make friends quickly. Uh, maybe you were poor, so you needed to know auto repair and crafts and things like that. So, you know, otherwise it wasn't going to get done. So, and here's a great thing is hard work without talent is a shame, but talent without hard work is a tragedy. Reminds me of my personal opinion of some celebrities who I won't name. Um, they've been around a long time. They've really made it far. And as far as I can tell, you know, they had some acting talent. But they made it as a singer, and personally, I find their singing to, I don't know, about as appealing as a you know, nail scraping on a chalkboard. But they worked like crazy, and they got where they needed to go. So that shows that hard work and talent can you know, cause great things to happen. So that's probably what you want to say, is what's your greatest talent or skill, and what work have you put into it to develop that? Whether it's athletics, the three-hour crew practice every day, um, whether it's academics, well, okay, you study every day. You study, and that's most of what you do. Um, you know, theater, well, you're at, th you're at the theater all the time that you're not at school or not at home sleeping. Okay, so you get the idea with that. So let's examine the fourth question. So, describe how you've taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or work to overcome an educational barrier you have faced. Educational opportunity, have you had any internships, university, school, corporate, government, where you worked over the summer or any summer program, extra classes, research projects, anything you worked on for extra credit for a course or just independent studying that you did? Maybe you have a really great library in your town, so you took advantage of the library. Um, barriers, well, you can see questions one and two to the Common App. Do you have problems with an academic concept? 
Were you discriminated against based on your status, race, sex, gender, sexual orientation, something else that set you apart, um, a physical or mental disability? Those are all illegal in most jurisdictions. Um, but you know, did you demand or receive accommodation for your disability? Did you demand that discrimination stop? Did you persevere in the face of discrimination? Could be discrimination that's legal. You know, maybe you're short. Maybe there's something about you that just wasn't very visually attractive to other people. Uh, maybe people didn't like that you were good at academics. Well, how did you overcome that? Um, did you work to overcome economic hardships? I couldn't afford SAT tutoring, so I made do with an outdated SAT book I bought from the library for 10 cents, or I offered to help sell SAT prep in exchange for a scholarship to the same SAT prep course. This could also be an academic problem, so you can see the answer to number five below. Speaking of number five, here we go. Describe the most significant challenge you have faced and the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge affected your academic achievement? So you can see number four, above of course number four refers to you to number five but anyway you can see also common app number two my answer guidelines to common apps number two follows so this could be an academic problem was calculus hard for you what was your mistake in thinking how did you correct it could be a technical problem in science art a hobby did you have trouble taking a picture with your camera equipment but you couldn't afford better equipment how did you work around the problem um you know was there some problem with a science lab that you had um, could be anything. So this question is extremely important in education. Good colleges aren't going to want applicants who give up as soon as they find a problem, but they'll always want people who can figure out creative ways to solve a problem when there isn't enough money to do things the conventional way or there's not enough time or there are other problems. Okay, physical disability even with reasonable accommodation that could be a significant challenge. Um, social discrimination could be illegal race, sex, religion, or legal poverty, not having the right kind of clothes, funny sounding last name, weird appearance, being too short, tall, fat, skinny, etc. Those things aren't illegal. You can discriminate against someone based on how much money they have, what their clothes look like, what they look like, da 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 da. So, how do you overcome it when there's no real legal protection for you? Um, that's you know many different ways you can do that maybe you developed a good sense of humor maybe you just worked harder um perhaps changing your attitude and questioning your assumptions were the key so this question is like common app question number three you can see the common app video this question is fundamental to colleges seeing how much college-like experience you've had either in or out of the classroom the whole point of your college university experience is to question assumptions you've made about life, society, and yourself. And trust me, you'll be confronted with ideas very different from the ones you have, presented by people who are just as intelligent as you are. And it's a good thing. You'll be able to develop the ability to think critically and to distinguish sophistry, that is false logic, from just sophisticated reasoning. So think about what gave you a hard time so far from you know kindergarten through 11th well really 12th grade if you're doing this in 12th grade um, and what can you do with it the fifth question continued so perhaps your studies outside the classroom influenced your thoughts about what you've been taught in the classroom or society in general. For example, you might say, I learned that political lobbying can affect medical and scientific advice. When I learned how cattle ranching and grain farming interests, not nutritionists and doctors, developed the four food groups popular from the 1940s until the food pyramid was developed. Similar lobbying has affected drug policy, energy policy, military intervention policy, and even the criminal justice system in this country. Maybe that was a challenge you faced, is that your history teachers didn't want to hear anything about that, um, or that you just felt disengaged because the history presented to you in your high school class was very sanitized and didn't include any of this or only touched on it very briefly. So you can see also the common app question five about personal growth. Did you win a contest or prize? You know, that didn't mean that much to you in the end. How did you grow as a person? What did it teach you about yourself? How did you change? You know, what else caused you to grow as a person? Did you struggle to solve a problem and learn about yourself? Well, that would 
tie very well into this one where you're talking about a challenge or something that you faced. Um, did you work to change something in your school, community, etc.? So some other philosophical idea or general idea about life. Did you realize things weren't as simple as you thought they were? So maybe the, in quotes, dumb kid in your class surprised you with a deep insight into something. Maybe someone who you thought was hurting you was actually trying to help and would have helped you if you'd let them or did help you despite your best efforts to resist their help. Uh, for example, a teacher who might have seemed to have an attitude problem or just, in quotes, have it in for you, but who just wanted you to do your best work. You can think of it in terms of something like pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. Maybe some of these things, these growth experiences caused you pain, but you realize you didn't have to suffer from it. You could just learn from the pain and move on. Or another saying is you can't change the wind, but you can change your sails. Did you learn something about personal responsibility when something went wrong for you, um, when you faced challenges that maybe other people didn't? A new perspective on an old event that really annoyed you, you know, might help you, you know, when you re-examine it, you might say, oh, okay, I was looking at this the wrong way. Um, I wasn't being picked on, or this wasn't meant just to be destructive. It was actually something that could be greatly constructive if I looked at it the right way. Did participating in a sport, especially one you weren't good at, teach about teamwork, goals, discipline, time management? That would be a big challenge if you said, well, I don't have much athletic ability, but I know I really should participate in athletics and I really want to. So um, I didn't do much other than win the most improved award, but darn it, I won that award. Uh, something like that. Did you learn something from scouting or some other extracurricular activity that may have taught you the same things? Um, Perhaps the change affected your academic achievement negatively in the short run. You had bad grades till you learned the concept or poor grades from teachers with whom you didn't agree. But positively in the long run, you have a deeper understanding of math or history. Um, it might also be you might have slightly lower grades because you are at athletic practices all the time for the challenging varsity team that you're on, even though you have as much, if not more, academic ability than people who aren't on athletic teams. The sixth question, think about an academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you have furthered this interest inside and or outside the question, or outside the classroom, not the question. So if you're interested in history, what historical books have you read outside the classroom? That's something I would want to touch on. If you're interested in science, what kind of scientific things do you do when you're not in class? Um, what have you done in class? What's your passion, philosophy, theater, religion, math, science? How does that make you feel? What's a greater mastery and understanding? You know, do you feel like you have a greater ma mastery and understanding the more you learn? Um, how do you learn more about these things? Is it from experience? Is it from going to the library and reading? Is it from going to classes? Is it from watching YouTube? Is it a combination of those? All of those things are really important. Maybe even took some community college classes or some other kind of classes outside the normal public school or private school that you attend. Talk about it. Let them know. The seventh prompt. What have you done to make your school or your community a better place? Think about volunteer work, political activism, tutoring, an Eagle Scout or a church service project. Um, maybe something you did online. Did you produce free educational YouTube videos like this one that you're watching? Did you help challenge an unfair school rule? Something maybe boys couldn't wear shorts in 100 degree hurt. 100 degree hurt. 100 degree heat. Well, that might hurt if you're having to wear long pants, and, but girls could wear short skirts. Even small time help means something. Did you help your friends with homework, pick up trash when you saw it, stand up for someone being harassed or bullied? And here's the saying, make the world a better place one person at a time. Start with yourself. How have you acted on your individual level to change the world? The eighth prompt, beyond what's already been shared in your application, what do you believe makes you stand out as a strong candidate for admissions to the University of California? So you can see the common app question one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, please share your story. Fine, if your background is important to you, please share your background and explain why it's important to you. Who are you? Is your ethnic background important? Were you born in another country and, and did you move to the US? 
Are you applying from a country outside the U.S.? Maybe you're a member of an ethnic minority or an ethnicity that's rare in the area where you were raised, so your experiences have been very different from those in the majority, even though you grew up in the same area. That would be an interesting perspective you could bring to a UC school. What made you who you are today? Perhaps you moved frequently as a child. Maybe your parents worked for the US government, the military, the foreign service, or a very large multinational corporation. Perhaps you had to overcome a disability, physical, mental, or emotional, poverty, discrimination based on some characteristic. I understand you could already list this as your greatest challenge, but if you've already used that or you don't want to answer that question, you might put it here. Um, what was it like being short in an area where most people are really tall? Were you the child of the teachers or preachers who would be watched just naturally more than others? Because after all, that's the teacher's kid. That's the preacher's kid. So any of those things would be great to share in your application. Um, you could talk more about your talents. You could talk about a lot of different things. That would all be great. The eighth prompt continued, okay, how has your experience made you a good candidate for UC school? It might be, my multicultural background makes me a natural choice for a multicultural school such as UC Berkeley or UCLA. You could be part Latvian, Mexican, and Czechoslovakian or something like that. Uh, my relatives have studied at UC schools since UC was founded in 1858. Yeah, that's interesting. That might be something that they'd be interested in. My high school had a thousand students in each class year. Being at a student at a school with 4,000 students in it taught me not to rely on individual attention from instructors or the administration, which is a quality that certainly helps at a school of 30,000 or more students, such as UC Berkeley. Um, or I am a member of a tribe whose ancestral lands are what, is are what are currently called California. So any of those things might be interesting, might make you particularly suited to being a UC Berkeley student or a UC whatever student. Talent in art, music, athletics, math, science, writing. I know there's other questions on that, but if you had advanced training, if you had self-study, anything else that means you'd be a great UC student. You know, I believe that we should all uh, you know, think globally and act locally. Therefore, I'd be a great UC Berkeley student, something like that. And, you know, show what you've done to advance those thoughts rather than just thinking them. I hope this helped. I'd appreciate your input. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment below or contact me at the phone or email at the beginning of this video. If you like this and you want to help me make more videos, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I do in-person and online tutoring for the SAT, ACT, and more. And again, thanks for watching this. Comments are welcome. I reserve the right to edit for relevancy and common courtesy. So please just be nice in your comments. You can disagree with me. You can even criticize me harshly, but just keep them on point. All right. Hope you're having a good day. Enjoy your application to the UC schools or whatever prompted you to watch this video. Thanks. Have a nice day.